So at the very end of that last video, um, I copied the problem down wrong. This should be x minus one to the two thirds power, not three halves power. Otherwise you end up with square root of a negative. It doesn't work very well. <clears throat> All right, so um, you can see by looking at it that the problem area is gonna be when x equals one, which in fact is within the interval of integrations between the limits of integration. So you can see that just by looking analytically. If you look at a graph, you can see that there's a vertical asymptote. Um, the x is approaching positive infinity from both directions, so the limit as x approaches 1 is actually positive infinity. It's not non-existent. Right, so if we had one side was negative infinity and the other side was positive infinity, we would end up with an integral that is undefined. Um, this one is either going to be infinite, it's going to be positive infinity, or it's going to be a finite number. But let's find out which it is. So the key difference in this one is that um, this time the problematic area is not one of the two limits of integration. So what we do is we need to break the integral up. That's sort of obvious, I suppose. So we break it into integral from 0 to 1 of dx over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds power uh, plus the integral from 1 to 3 of dx over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds power. All right, so essentially that is we're treating the integral from 0 to 1 and the integral from 1 to 3 separately, and then we're going to add them together, which hopefully makes sense uh, for us to do that. All right, so now each of these we're going to split down as a limit. So the first one is going to be uh, the limit as b approaches 1 from the left of the integral from 0 to b, and let's write this as x minus 1 to the negative 2 thirds power dx plus, all right, because, so if we look at the interval from 0 to 3 and we look at 1, all right, <clears throat> this upper limit, as we're looking at this part, this upper limit is going to approach the 1 from the left. Okay, Kat, you're throwing a shadow on my work here. Cat's throwing a shadow. Come on, cat. Wait, move. Okay, so the B is approaching one from the left. All right, the A, of course, is going to approach the one from the right. And sometimes that distinction will be crucial and sometimes it won't. So this is going to be limit, but you know, it's correct either way. So the limit is A um, approaches one from the right of the integral from a to 3 of uh, x minus 1 to the negative 2 thirds power dx. So that's how we're splitting this up basically as two limits. One is the limit as b approaches 1 from the left, the other as a approaches 1 from the right. All right, so this integral is this part, this integral is this part. Okay, so then that We'll go ahead and do the antiderivative. Limit as b approaches 1 from the left of... Um, so this is going to be uh, x minus 1 to the 1 third divided by 1 third. So we'll make it 3x minus 1 to the 1 third. We're really doing a u substitution. u equals x minus 1, but du equals dx. That's a linear u substitution. So we can multiply by 1 over g prime, which would be 1 over 1. Um, so we don't have to do that. So we can basically treat the x minus 1 just as though it were x. And this is from 0 to b. And then I have plus limit as a approaches 1 from the right of, so same antiderivative here, 3x minus 1 to the 1 third power from um, a to 3. And those are my two parts of the integral. All right. So that equals the limit as b approaches 1 from the left. Let's go ahead and plug in the um, we'll pl I'll plug in these values and I'll also change the one-third power to a cube root. So I'm going to have um, 3 cube root of b minus 1 minus, when I plug in the 0, I'm going to have 3 cube root of negative 1. So 3 cube root of negative 1. This is a b. All right, and then plus limit as a approaches 1 from the right. Of. Now we'll plug in these values, so this time the 3 comes first. So we're going to have 3 times the cube root of 2. All right, that's just plugging in the 3, and 3 minus 1 is 2, so cube root of 2. And then uh, minus uh, 3 cube root of putting the a in, a minus 1. So remembering to put the 3 and then the a, right? Because this time it was the b and then the 0. But we're always putting the upper limit 
um, first and the lower limit second. <clears throat> all right, so now what does all this stuff equal? Well, um, so the limit as b approaches 1 from the left, we can really evaluate this limit by substitution. This is just going to be 0. All right, and then here, I'm going to have negative 3 times the cube root of negative 1, which is negative 3 times negative 1, is 3. All right, and then over here, <clears throat> I'm going to have 3 cube root of 2, 3 cube root of 2. And then here, I'm going to have, um, plugging in the 1, I have cube root of 0, so I can evaluate that by substitution. This is also 0, and then this is my answer, 3 plus 3 cube root 2. Now, if I failed to consider the asymptote, that vertical asymptote, and I just did the work and completely ignored the limits, you get the same answer. But you're still wrong, because... This integral is not equal to just the antiderivative evaluated at 3 minus 0. That, that's procedurally incorrect. We need to consider <clears throat> this uh, asymptote. So in order to really correctly explain this integral, I need to split it up as these limits. All right, so that's that one. What else are we going to do? We're up to six minutes, I guess. Um, we'll save the next one for... I guess I wanted to do sort of an interesting one. I'll, I'll, I'll give you one to do. You guys should try to do the integral from negative infinity to zero of x e to the negative x squared dx. Just try that as an example.